So we were talking about uh, consumer fatigue, um, all, of, all of the messages. What do you typically uh, see organizations be successful at when they integrate the type of business intelligence you help them with, with some of their communication programs or their customer outreach programs? Sure. Well, it's, it's certainly not the, the newest, hottest thing, but to be honest with you, email is still exceptionally effective. Uh, and I think that a, a well-targeted email um, that, that goes to the right consumer at the right time can be, to this day, the most powerful driver of a new transaction that's out there. Uh, you know, social media is big, obviously, and I think that there's there's a lot to be done and a lot that people are doing in that area. It can certainly be, uh, you know, comparably powerful if it's well targeted and well timed. But the thing is that I think, uh, you know, with an email, there is a certain level of dedicated attention that's going to an individual message that's in front of a person. Whereas, you know, if you're doing social media targeting. Uh, you know, if you're doing it well and you're doing it organically, maybe you show up on someone's Facebook wall in the midst of 20 other messages that are all sitting kind of above the fold on a page, or you're sitting in an, in an ad bar on, on the right side of the page. Whereas in an email, uh, if someone is, is intrigued enough to actually click it and open it, uh, then they've already demonstrated some level of interest or some level of, of kind of being, being captured into that process. And then you have a captive audience and you have an opportunity to deliver a message. But that all kind of turns back to you know, getting people when they are in that right moment, uh, when they're ready to be receptive, uh, when they're ready to actually hear that message. And you know, when you talk about uh, you know, being smart about uh, figuring out intent and kind of figuring out timing, that's uh, in some ways uh, the beauty of email, in, in my opinion, is that uh, with social media, if you don't see that thing in your news feed that's happened 30 minutes ago and you go back two hours later, it's gone unless you want to dig really, really deep. Whereas if you don't want to deal with this thing in your inbox right now, uh, it's a much more limited stream. There are fewer people that you kind of allow to kind of inject themselves into your inbox. You might come back and come across it. You know, I'm a zero inbox guy, so I'm either you know, if I don't have uh, uh, zero items in my inbox, then I have a to-do list. And a lot of times, I'll get an email from a brand that's got a coupon in it. If it's really well targeted and they hit me at the right time, that's going to stay in my inbox. And I, I've effectively just created a to-do list item to go and purchase this product that uh, you know that I didn't really create myself. Someone injected it into into my kind of day-to-day process. And, I don't think that I'm unique in, in that regard. In fact, I know that I'm not. I think that a lot of people uh, kind of use uh, email as an opportunity to be reminded of things and kind of the, uh, in the event that you're able to catch people at the right time with the right intent, um, it can be exceptionally powerful. So that's interesting because uh, you and I earlier talked about this um, expectation of um, having a relationship with the brand and relationship could be I am ready to buy brand, why aren't you smart and right. getting that, right? And, but also there is this spookiness. We've been um, talking in, uh, online about uh, this, this book recently, The Power of Habit mm-hmm. of uh, target, you know, targeting uh, a certain demographic um, with uh, you know, their ability, demonstrating their ability to see intent. Sure. And so what, where is this line between uh, welcome and ex- expected right. and spooky? Yeah, I, I think uh, it, it is is a very, very blurry line. And I think that on a consumer to consumer basis, it's, it can be very, very different. Um, the real irony is that there we have reached a point in, in history where there is a very strong expectation from consumers that they are being watched in, in some regard or that the companies that are targeting them are collecting information about them. And I think that you know if I get an email in my inbox that's trying to sell me uh, diapers and I haven't recently had a child, I'm upset with that retailer because I said, don't you know based on, based on what I'm buying that you should not be sending me this email? You know, you're, you're consuming my time by sending me an ad for something that I, that I don't need. Uh, and I think that that's, that's extremely and increasingly common is that there, there's an expectation among the broader consumer set that the people who are marketing to them know something about them. Um, even if, if it's the fact that they're watching uh, you know, the, the college football game on Saturday afternoon, uh, you know, what does that say about the typical consumer? And, and you know, if you're seeing commercials during that that don't seem to fall into your bucket, there's, there's kind of a, a point of confusion there. Uh, and when you juxtapose that with the level of concern and, and frustration that some consumers see when they become acutely aware that there's actually been a very intentional kind of targeted uh, platform 
that's been rolled out at, at large retailers like Target to do this kind of thing. Um, you know, it puts us in this really strange time in history, basically, where uh, you know, it's like a Venn diagram of people who, you know, you've got these people who are okay with it and the people who are uh, not okay with it. And then there's this weird kind of overlapping space where you get this bizarre frustration of people who are both, they both have an expectation and they're frustrated when that expectation is met. Um, and I think that that's really, you know, that's indicative of just a shift in the industry in general and kind of in how people are, uh, you know, thinking about and becoming accustomed to becoming marketed to. And I think that as you see um, younger generations who have kind of grown up with the internet continue to age, I think that the typical expectation, if you look at it uh, kind of by, by age group, is that younger people are more likely to have these expectations and kind of more likely to be comfortable with having been uh, directly marketed to in a way that indicates that someone's kind of keeping an eye on what they're up to. Um, whereas that's a, that's a really spooky concept uh, to people who kind of, you know, when they, when they throughout their own history of being marketed to are very much more accustomed to, you know, seeing the ad in the paper and maybe it applies to them and maybe it doesn't, but everybody sees that same ad. Um, but today's newspaper is the internet and today's ad is a retargeted ad that's using cookies from your browser that are pulled off the different websites you've been to demonstrating intent. Uh, and you know it's a very very different story, and you know the people who I think are are concerned by it um, are probably the the a, a they may be a majority right now, but if so, they're a, they're a decreasing majority. And I think you know if you look ten years from now, uh, I think the level of controversy over the kind of targeting that's going on today will be will be zero. I think it'll be laughable. I mean, we are moving forward uh, so aggressively with what our capabilities are in this regard that. Uh, it's inevitable that kind of consumer comfort with this kind of thing will, will increase.